Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be taking a closer look to actually making use of our damage detection to actually apply damage to actors. So to do this, we will go into our blueprint component for combat. And from here, you remember we had here on the tick, we are doing a multi-line trace and we're saying which characters are we currently hitting. And we might want to actually demonstrate this as well. So let's create a duplicate of this character. And like so. And let's place him opposite us. Now, we need to make sure that the first character that we had is, well, it doesn't matter that much, I guess, but uh, if we type in possess, you can see it's going to be auto-possessed by player zero placed in the world. And if we go to the other character, it's also saying that it's going to be auto-possessed. So there will be a race condition between which one we will be actually trying to possess based on its location in the world. So we'll just uh, zero this out. So this character is not possessed by the player. So now if we press play, we will always be getting uh, the character that's looking in this direction, essentially. And if we were to do our ability now, we, you can see that we are slashing and you can see we're going through the character and we're not actually, the, the lines are staying red. They're, they're not detecting a hit. Now, the reason this is happening is because if we go to our blueprint component for combat, what we have as our uh, multi-line trace by channel uh, is going to be set as visibility by default. You can see we have camera and visibility. And depending on what kind of settings we have on our uh, character, uh, you can see our, uh, let's see, physics collision over here. You can see we have certain uh, settings when it comes to things like visibility and uh, camera and, and such. So um, the character is currently not blocking the, the specific channel that we're sending out in this case. Um, I have done a tutorial that's more in depth on tracing. I will link it in the video. So if you're unfamiliar, you can uh, look that one up. Uh, but for now, what we will be doing is setting up our own trace channel so that we can uh, have it we don't have to make make use of the ones that are already existing. We can make one for our purposes. So going to project settings, there is a category here called collision. And in here you can see we have something called trace channels. We can make a new trace channel. We can give it a name. We can call this one damage, for example. Uh, you might want to name it something more specific if, if you're going to have a multitude of different trace channels related to damage in certain ways. Uh, you can also choose a default response here. So for example, we can say ignore, meaning that uh, all objects in the world will by default be ignoring uh, this trace channel, uh, which is fine because then we won't uh, accidentally like have the trace be interrupted by other objects we don't intend to. So we can be very specific about which objects are actually going to be uh, blocking the trace channel. So going back to our third person character, we can now click on the capsule component here and see the, um, let's compile and save actually, and then press the capsule component. And you can see that the damage channel has now appeared uh, underneath here and it is set to ignore, which was the default we set. But however, we do want the third person character to block this channel because we want it to register that a hit has been done. So we'll change the collision presets from pawn to custom, which will keep everything as it is. And we'll just move the, the damage from being ignored to instead being in the block category. Uh, we compile and save. And if we now go to our, let's see, where is it? A blue print component for combat. We change the traceability channel here. We can't see it right now. So if we compile, it should be appearing. See, it can damage appears. So now it will be using the damage channel instead. So going back, let's close down the project settings. We play again, we walk up to the character and we press our ability. And you can see that the traces are happening and there are certain points where it has been detected that it's um, 
hit something. Now you might notice that the the points are uh, not uh, what to say. They they don't actually hit the mesh, but the reason for that is because we have the collision on the actual capsule around the character. You may want to have it on the actual mesh yourself, but then you would have to set the settings for that, of course. But that's up to you, depending on how you want to do it. But for now, we at least have the ability to detect uh, a hit depending on when we're slashing it, essentially, on our abilities. So that's a good first step. So going back to our, our characters now, or our blueprint component for combat, we now want to have the ability to actually deal damage to the characters that we have identified. So an easy way to do this is simply go to our uh, tick here, where we're determining that, well, uh, this is the character that we have hit. So we can do a simple loop here, saying loop through all of the different elements over here. and of these elements we want to, to do damage, essentially. So we can just break this result, and from here we can get a hit actor. Hit actor is going to be whatever we hit. And we can say apply damage. Looking up like so, we'll click on this break result, and we will right click and say uh, no. Let's just click the collapse button in here. So we'll have a fewer amount of uh, nodes to deal with. So every 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 actor that we're hitting, we're going to be applying damage to here. And we can just set this to a debug value of, let's say, 10. Now, we have as default on our character that it should have 100 health. So this should then be reducing uh, the health by 10 each. But we don't have an, a way to actually react to damage currently. So we can actually add that, and let's add that over here, so it's very easy to see uh, that is happening. So there's an event called any damage. Um, any damage, is it not? Um, let's see, we right click and type damage. Uh, do, 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 do. No. Ah, yes, of course not, because we're in a blueprint component an actor component. So this uh, component doesn't have the damage event available to it. The owner actually does. So let's see we do something like this then. We say on begin play. We say we have our owner over here. Do a reroute node and we can say we want to bind the event uh, damage. Yeah. So we see we have binding events of take any damage, for example. So let's say we want to do this. This means that we will go to our actor and say whenever its event for um, any damage is happening, uh, then this event should be calling. So we'll just create an event up here. And we'll just say... Um, um, damage taken, let's call it. And here we can have some debug just saying print string, saying damage was taken. Okay. So let's demonstrate this. So now by going to our character and walking up to it and we slash it, we can see that damage was taken has been printed a bunch of times. So what's happening here is then uh, we're binding the event uh, that's called take any damage that is belonging to, well, any actor in the game has it. And in, when that's happening, we're also firing our own event here, which is uh, typing out damage was taken. Uh, so we don't actually need to implement it in the character. The, the component handles it completely. Um, the problem here might be, if you noticed, that when we slash here, you can see damage was taken is printed multiple times. And it's happening because each of the different lines here, which happens to be five in this case, uh, are registered as hits. So each of these will be registering damage, essentially, for 10 damage. Now, that this might be what you want to have, but most likely it is not. So uh, that is something that we will be handling uh, later on and cleaning up. But for now, we at least have the ability to 
uh, deal damage with our attacks. While we are here, we might as well do some cleaning up that we've done earlier. So one of the things we might want to do is if we go to our equipment here, you see that we are not sending in an owner and an instigator. We might want to fix that. So let's do that. We'll get an owner and we'll hook it up into the owner. The instigator here wants to be a pawn object reference and we don't currently know if we are belonging to a pawn so we need to uh, either cast that over there but it would make more sense to just save it for later so our owner over here we can say cast to uh, pawn which means we're turning our owner's object reference into a pawn if it is able to and if it is able to, we will promote it to a variable, which we will be calling pawn reference. Now going back to our equipment spawning here, we can go and get our pawn reference. And from that we can just, oh, sorry, hook it up like so. And we now have a pawn object reference there as well. Uh, another thing we might want to do to clean up is to actually have the socket name here in this case as an input parameter here to the equip weapon so we could possibly equip the weapon in, in uh, different slots if we wanted to. Uh, so what we can do is we can mark all of this and copy it so we have it copied and then we plug up the socket name over there. Then we can just... actually we need to do that. Yeah. Uh, We'll reroute it a bit so it's a bit cleaner. So now we have the socket name in here which the actor will be attached to. Uh, but now we have it as an input which means we need to go to our character where we're actually doing the equipping. Which we did on our begin play, begin play event. So instead of just equipping weapon with a specific weapon class we also paste in the socket that we copied earlier so that it is being sent in there. And we can just remove this stuff because we don't need that anymore. So now we have cleaned up a few of our sins at least moving forward. Uh, but yeah, I think this might be a good place to stop for now. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.